Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to our second series of the Indigenous Conversations with Kim Muskrat. Today, I would like to um, recognize and thank the Ontario Trillium Foundation Resilient Communities Fund for their financial support to help us bring Indigenous conversations to a wider community through the webinar series. Kim Muskrat is a member of Hiawatha First Nation, Mississaugas of Rice Lake. She sits with the Turtle Clan and is a life giver, water walker, medicine quay, pipe carrier, knowledge keeper, storyteller, and grandmother. As a knowledge keeper, she has dedicated her life to learning and passing her teachings and experiences on to the youth. Her traditional name is Wasea Quay, which translated means bright light woman, which she is proud of the strength that it carries with the name. Wasea Quay travels along the red road living Minobamadzwin, a good life. As she continues to learn more about our sacred medicines and healing powers they bring while, she, while following in the same path as her Nokomis. Kim, welcome to today's conversation. Nation and Dow. Um, thank you very much for inviting me. It's an, it's an honor to be here. Um, so um, I've introduced myself. Um, Wasea Kwe was gifted um, that, that name to me by Elder Doug Williams of Curve Lake. And I found it a great honor because Doug was a good friend of my father's. And uh, when I asked him, to gift me a name, that was the name that came to him. And we were all surprised because we thought it would have something to do with medicine because I harvest the medicine and I learn that medicine. And he said a bear, a big black bear came to him wearing a top hat and a bow tie and said, you will call her Wasea Quay. And I said, wearing a top hat and a bow tie? And he's like, that's the name they said, and I'm not going against that medicine there. So I thank him for that beautiful name. I um, carry it with pride. Everything in creation um, is a living spirit. And we as Anishinaabe have to connect with that spirit. It's our duty, our job. We've known this from the very beginning when we first came here, that that was our job as Anishinaabe people was to take care of Mother Earth and she would take care of us. Um, she sustains us not only in water, food, shelter, um, everything. She gives us life through everything. And in order um, to thank her, to say miigwech to her, we have to take care of her. And that includes all those medicines, those um, grandmothers, those, those beautiful trees that give us our medicine here on Mother Earth. Um, when I think of plants, I get butterflies in my belly. When I go out to harvest, I get this tingly feeling, this, this butterfly feeling in my belly. And uh, I remember as a young girl, I would have to go out with my grandmother and harvest these medicines. And I hated it because I was the one that had to go out in the woods and go on weekends when all my other friends were out playing and hanging out and going to birthday parties and doing all these things. In the fall, it was my job to go with my grandmother to harvest some of these medicines in our community. And you know, I would be um, defiant and I would be angry. And my grandmother said, this is your job. This is your job and this is what you're here for. And this is what you have to do. And so I would still be angry, but I would still go out and do it. And now I often think to myself, if I could have a one day back with my grandmother and hold the knowledge that that woman held in medicines, what a wonderful thing it would be. And then I found out through Elder Doug Williams that not only my grandmother, but my great grandmother and my great great grandmother were also um, medicine knowledge holders. And my great 
great grandmother, which was called Granny Potash, would travel all over the communities, Curve Lake, Alderville, Scugog, the Credit, up to Blind River, all of those places to bring medicines and help um, the sick. And she brought hundreds of babies into the world and she helped hundreds of people go into the spirit world and she was well known and they always called her Granny Potash. So that kind of made me take a step back and think, okay, I've got to get serious about my medicines. And my grandmother would tell me, you go sit with those medicines in the woods and those medicines will tell you what they're good for. And um, they will tell you where they go in the body. For instance, cedar. If you look at cedar, it looks like a lung. So that tells you, you know, it's good for the lungs, the respiratory. Same as that, that heart berry, that strawberry. It's good for our heart. And it's one of our first berries, at least in this area it is. It's one of our first berries um, that we pick. Um, one thing we always must remember is when we take, we have to give back. And I can't stress this enough that when you take a medicine, you need to leave something, whether it's tobacco, juniper, if you take juniper berries for a toothache, they really like copper for their roots. So you can leave some pennies. Um, but you always, always have to give back. And if you harvest something with a seed, replant those seeds. If you take from a tree, replant a tree. You always, always have to give back to Mother Earth. And I can't stress that enough. You have to walk gently on Mother Earth when you're out harvesting. Be careful where you walk. Be very, very careful where you walk that you're not stepping on medicines and destroying something. Walk gently. And that's what they mean by walking gently on Mother Earth is be careful where you walk because there's medicines everywhere. So just walk gently and um, um, always remember to give back. Always, always remember to give back. I have some notes here because I'm, I'm a scatterbrain. I was telling the girls earlier, I'm like a squirrel. I'll start one conversation and I'll think of something else and I'll go zooming off to that and then forget what I'm saying. So when you go out to um, harvest a medicine, Always tell that medicine why you're harvesting it. Always give it thanks and tell her, tell it where you need it to go in the body. Um, for example, again, cedar, if you have a cold or you have an infection in the lungs or the respiratory area, as you're harvesting that medicine, you're putting down tobacco and you're telling that cedar, thank you. Thank you for giving yourself to me. This is what I need you for. This is what I need you to heal. And it's best that you harvest your medicines because you know what you need them to do. If you have to go out and harvest a medicine for somebody that's very, very sick and can't do it themselves, tell that medicine, I'm harvesting you for this reason. This is what I need you to do. Make watch for healing this illness. You always, always have to talk to those medicines. And trees are our medicines too. We have um, many trees that uh, give us medicine. Um, one important thing I must mention is never throw medicines in the garbage or flush them down the drain or down the toilet or whatever. Put them back out on Mother Earth. Um, and give back to Mother Earth those medicines, and she will do what she needs to do with them. I'm told that uh, Mother Earth turns, and she gives us the medicines that we need at that time, and then she passes other medicines off to others. So if you've ever noticed that one year something is very, very plentiful in your area, but it's not so plentiful the next year, it's because she has turned those medicines and she's gifted them to somebody else that needs them in that area, and she's brought you something. For example, last year, or the year before when COVID first started, I got four harvests out of my sage. 
And I thought, wow, she must know that we really, really need sage because sage is one of those medicines that help kill the spread of COVID. So if you smudge your home every day, it's going to kill those germs with COVID in, in your home. So I got tons and tons of sage for harvest. That's very rare for me to get four harvests out of sage, but it just kept coming up and coming up and coming up and, and I couldn't harvest it fast enough. So I invited other people to come harvest what I couldn't get because I'm so, so busy. So I've had um, many, many women came out and they harvested the sage because I grow it everywhere. And of course, sage takes over because it's a root. Um, it's a root plant, so it goes along, you know, underneath the ground and it, it pops up everywhere. So if you're going to plant sage, I suggest you do it in a garden that has nothing else in it because it will take over and it may kill whatever is in that garden because it's, it just takes over. It, it just takes over. Know your plants before you harvest them. Know what you're harvesting. Um, ask someone or educate yourself. Look it up, educate yourself. What am I harvesting? What is it good for? Or ask someone. I don't prescribe medicines. Um, if somebody asks me about medicines, I, um, I always refer them to a healer. Now there's a difference between a medicine knowledge holder and a healer. I am a knowledge holder in the medicines and I know a little bit. I don't... Um, I don't say I know a whole lot. I know a tiny, tiny bit about the medicines. And because there's so many medicines out there, it's hard to know every single one of them. So I always refer people to a healer, a medicine healer. Um, I harvest, I don't prescribe. I always say this may help you ask a healer. A healer is best to answer those questions. I will um, find you the help if you don't know of any and I will ask for you. Um, pick your medicines in a clean place. Always look around you, make sure that that area, the ground is a clean place. Um, my grandmother told me one time that if there's a snake around that medicine that you wanna heal or that you wanna pick, you wanna harvest, move on to someplace else. Don't touch that medicine because that snake is there protecting that medicine for one reason. Well, for two reasons actually that there's very little of that medicine left and it needs to rejuvenate or that medicine is not good at that time, like something has been dumped on it or something has been poured on it or it's just not a healthy medicine. So if there's a snake around you, move on. Never ever take more than what you need. You always, always leave medicines for the next seven generations. So don't over harvest, only take what you need for your healing. Never ever over harvest. Um, again, my notes here. So I give you everything. And I can't, I can't express this enough. Never give a medicine to a pregnant woman because you may harm that unborn child um, unknowingly, but you never ever ever give medicines to a pregnant woman. Um, just because you carry the medicine knowledge doesn't mean that uh, you're the healer. You have that knowledge. You point somebody in the direction of a medicine healer. Um, I don't call myself a medicine quay. Um, that title um, is like, an, like the elders in your community. That's gifted to you by the people in your community and, and your people. They gift you that, that title like an elder. An elder is gifted that title by the people. Um, yeah, you're the one asking the medicine um, to help heal you. So you should be the one picking that medicine. Again, unless somebody is very, very sick and they can't get out to do it. But you need to talk to that medicine, constantly talk to that medicine. Tell them why, why I'm picking you, what I need you to do. And always give back and always say miigwech to that medicine. Mother Earth gives us these beautiful medicines and she gives them to us for a reason and that's to heal us. Um, so as I mentioned, trees carry medicine as well. 
And um, I love going to a tree and taking my shoes off and socks off and sticking my feet in the, in the dirt around the roots of the tree and just grounding myself and feeling that energy because I feel energy from trees. It's just amazing. Or I'll sit and I'll lean my back, my spine against the bark of the tree and I can feel that energy coming to me. And I will sing to that tree or I will talk to that tree. If I'm harvesting, I'll tell that tree why I'm harvesting. Um, as I mentioned, cedar is one of our most powerful medicines. Um, it's used for the lungs. We use it in ceremony. We use it when emotions are um, heavy. We use it in death. We bathe with it. We drink it. Um, we use it for colds. Um, we, it's one of our strongest, strongest medicines. We use it in ceremonies. Um, right now, my husband is sick in the hospital. And once a week, I do a cedar bath when I go up to see him. And I take cedar bath up and I wash him. Um, another one is the tamarack. And uh, it's the bark. The bark is made into tea and it's amazing for addictions. It's, it's very, very good for addictions. It's kind of like that uh, sema flower that you see on a sema plant, a tobacco plant, that flower that comes, that's used for addictions as well. And it's made into tea. The birch bark, of course, we all know that chugga is one of the claim to fame for the birch bark. It's um, It's overpicked is what it is. It's overpicked and it's, um, you can find it in health food stores all over Toronto. It costs you a fortune to get it and it's overpicked and it's over harvested. Um, it's, uh, you harvest the chaga in the spring um, and you harvest the birch bark um, when the strawberries are ready, the birch bark is ready um, to be harvested. And of course, it's the birch bark is what our scrolls are written on. Um, it's also that healing water, that sap water that comes from the birch bark that we uh, harvest in the spring when we harvest our maple trees. We also harvest that, that birch bark or that birch sap and it's a healing, it's a healing water and it heals within and it's an antitoxin. Um, and it helps heal within and boost our immune system. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. Oh. oh, sumac, the berries are for diabetes and they've got to be the red berries. Don't touch the white berries on a sumac. And I don't know if you have white berry. I don't have them in our community. We only have the red sumac berries and it's uh, it's quay medicine as well. It helps with our um, moon times and stuff like that. Um, if we are having hemorrhaging um, due to birth or um, we just had a hysterectomy, the berries is made into tea and it's one of the teas that we drink as quay uh, for women. And um, the di and yeah, the berries are used for diabetes. Um, evergreen, so the balsam, evergreens are a medicine as well. So the balsam keeps bugs away. So we line our lodges with balsam and it helps keep mosquitoes and bugs away and, and ticks and all of those awful things. Um, and it's also a kidney medicine. Balsam is also a kidney medicine. Another one is the spruce gum. And uh, we use this a lot in our medicines. I use it in my Minikin medicine. I use the spruce gum. And it's also a puller for infections. So if you lay it, heat, warm it up, the spruce gum, lay it on whatever it is, an infection in your arm or wherever, you can lay it on there and it will pull that infection out. Um, red willow. And you have to be very, very careful with red willow bark. So you shave the red willow bark, um, but it's an aspirin. And a lot of people have allergies to aspirin. So when I make salves and stuff and I have red willow in those salves, I always say to people, are you allergic to aspirin? Do you have a sensitivity to aspirin? Because if you do, then this is not the salve that you need. You need something different. And Minigan is like, um, 
polysporin. And my minigin is very basic. I don't add a whole bunch of stuff to my minigin. I use um, spruce gum, bear grease, and beeswax. And that's all I add to my minigin because you don't need a whole bunch of stuff in there. And I don't, a lot of people will add the red willow bark. I don't because of allergies. And it, uh, aspirin allergy is a terrible thing and, and it requires hospitalization. So I try to keep it out of my minigin. Um, another thing is the deer, the wawashke, the deer. When we go out deer hunting or moose hunting, we always put down tobacco, always put down tobacco and thank that deer for its life because that deer is giving up its life for us. So we must always remember to thank that deer, that moose, that elk, whatever it is for hunting, because they're giving up our life, not only for food, but for shelter, for clothing, for everything and that we use on that animal. We always must remember to put down our tobacco and give thanks to that animal. And a rock has spirit. And um, I remember Elder Doug Williams saying, a rock has spirit and they're a lot like the Anishinaabe people. Um, they're resilient, they're strong, and they're always going to be here. So always say miigwech to those rocks because those are our spirits and uh, always make sure. So I am going to begin a slide, I hope, I hope. So bear root, I don't know if you guys have bear root in your area. Normally when I go out for um, a medicine walk, I bring you and I show you these medicines and I let you touch them and smell them and taste them. But of course we can't do that over Zoom. And um, I like to be out in the woods with people and I like to point out medicines while we're out walking. But of course with Zoom and, and COVID, we can't do that as much as we want to. So bear root, I don't know if you have it in your area. Um, it's used uh, for sore throats, colds, coughs. Um, it's also used for um, infections. It helps with herpes, AIDS, and HIV when made into a tea. A lot of um, fire keeper use bear root to start their fire. And the smell, I love the smell of bear root. Um, if you can get your hands on some, just smell it. It's such a beautiful, beautiful smell. The next one, of course, is our birch bark. and. Um, Chaga is growing on maybe one birch bark out of 10,000. And you may, you may see birch or chaga in two trees side by side. But that means another 20,000 don't have that birch bark or that chaga in it. And um, the birch tree is used for diarrhea. So if you cut it up and down and make it into a tea, it stops diarrhea. You cut it diagonally this way, it helps with constipation. So that's one of those things that, that my grandmother taught me at a very, very young age. Um, it flushes out the urinary tract as well um, it's for skin rashes, all of those beautiful things. And it's our healing sap, it's our healing water. And we, we harvest that the same time that we start our harvest with our maple syrup, our maple sap. Blueberries, everybody loves, well, not everybody loves blueberries, but um, blueberries are one of the highest antitoxins. And I can't say enough about these beautiful um, berries. Um, they may help against aging. They may help against cancer. And we always say they may help. They may help because we can't guarantee we can, as same as a doctor can't guarantee that a Western medicine is going to work. We can't say, um, the doctor can't say this antibiotic is going to work. It may help. And if it does, fantastic. If it doesn't, then there's no lawsuits for the doctor, right? He, ha he has to pick something else too. It lowers uh, blood pressure. And it's such a beautiful medicine. And um, if you can get to it before the bears do. The bears love berries. Burdock root. 
So we all know that those burrs get caught in our hair and on our clothes and we're constantly picking them. Um, burdock root tea is a good tea. It's one of their, our strongest teas. Um, it tr um, helps treat uh, skin issues. It's got a lot of um, vitamins in it. It's an antitoxin, a very powerful antitoxin. And it may inhibit some types of cancer and it's an aphrodisiac, so they say. So catnip. Now we don't have a whole lot in this area unless we plant it. But up in the credit, when I was up there doing a medicine walk a few years back, it grows in abundance up there. It's everywhere. And it's such an amazing medicine. Um, it's a sedative. It's kind of like a Valvarian. It, it helps calm you, helps you sleep. And you think it would do the opposite, right? Because of cats, what it does to cats, it sends them a cra crazy. But it reduces anxiety and restlessness and nervousness. It's a calming. It's a calming medicine. And it, it, uh, if you're lucky enough that you have it grow around you, then harvest it and keep it and make it into a tea. Of course, we already talked about cedar and it's one of our four medicines. And I don't know about you, but here in uh, Hiawatha, we call it shagab. I don't know what the other word is for it. Um, and it's a, such a powerful, powerful medicine. It does so much. And I know when I was down east, when we were traveling down east, they don't have a whole lot of cedar down there, but they have a lot of birch bark. So it's amazing how Mother Earth gives us what we need and what we don't need. So cedar is one of our most powerful. And there's your chaga. Now the outside of the chaga where it's the darkest is um, the most powerful. And inside is used for like liver and bladder infections. The outside, the claim to fame is diabetes and cancer. And it's made into tea. Um, a lot of people grind it up to a powder. To me, that's a waste of the chaga. I break it down into chunks. I make a tea with it. I make it as strong as I like tea. And I like my tea very, very strong. Then I take that chaga and I put it on a paper towel and I let it dry. And I keep using that chunk of chaga over and over again until there's no um, color left in the water. And then I place it out on Mother Earth. A lot of people use it once and throw it out. Don't. It's still, until there's no color left in any tea, it's still powerful medicine. It still has medicine in it. Never ever add sugar to your teas, to your medicines, because it breaks down those medicine properties. If it's bitter and you find it very bitter, you can add a bit of honey or you can add some maple syrup but don't add sugar to any of your medicine teas. It breaks down all those beautiful properties that we need in it. Corn silk, who knew? So corn silk is a medicine and it's used for bladder infection, um, for the urinary system, for prostate, for kidney stones, bedwetting. It's who knew when we, when we harvest those um, corn, you know, to have corn with our dinner, we're throwing out a medicine. So don't throw it out. It's good for uh, fatigue, blood pressure, uh, cholesterol levels. So keep that husk, keep that silk. I mean the silk, it's very, very good. And I'm told if you drink it in tea and hold it into your mouth, if you've got um, gum infection or tooth infection, it also helps to clear it up as well. One of my medicine teachers was telling me about that. Dandelion root. Those, that, those darn dandelions that take over our, our uh, beautiful um, lawns in the spring. Actually, they're one of the best medicines, most powerful medicines out there. So my grandmother used to make dandelion wine for medicinal purposes, of course. Um, and it's good for digestive ailments and relieves constipation. You can put the leaves in a salad and they're very, very tasty. You can make dandelion wine, dandelion tea. The root is um, one of the best parts of the dandelion. Dig them up, 
cut, let the roots dry, cut it up, store it, and then use it when needed and to make into a tea. It's great for upset bellies. Jewelweed, and I don't know what you guys call it, but when we were, we were kids, we used to call them touch me knots because you touch them and they pop. And jewelweed, I make into salve and it's great for um, bug bites and uh, rashes and poison ivy. Um, it promotes it when made into a tea um, blood flow uh, for post childbirth, joint pains, because I make it into a salve and you rub it on, bruises and swellings and fish poisonings and bug bites and these things. I mean, it's it's got a lot of uses to it. So if you see it, and when you harvest, always let it dry before you store it. Always let all medicines dry before you store them. If not, then you're going to end up with mold and you're going to have to throw the medicine out. Next one is Labrador tea. Um, some, it grows more down east than it does here. And I trade with um, a friend of mine that's down east and, and uh, I trade with them medicines. It's a T4 sore throat, chest congestion. I mean, you guys can read this coughs, lung infections, other ailments. Um, you make it into a tea. It's also taken for diarrhea, kidney problems, joint muscle pain, rheumatoid arthritis, headache, cancer. Women use it um, to cause an abortion or treat um, female disorders. It's one of the teas. Another one was um, Queen. Queen Anne lace, is, I think it grows, I think it was what you guys call it, Queen Anne lace that grows along the side of the road. Um, it was used the morning after pill, if you forgot to take your pill. They used it into a tea and they called it the morning after pill. Lavender, I think, is one of my favorite flowers, one of my favorite medicines, um, next to cedar. Um, lavender, you can make into oils, you can make into teas, you can put into pillows to put under your, under your pillow to help you sleep, put into little sashes. Um, my granddaughter, she's seven now, but when she was younger, she had a hard time sleeping. She wasn't a baby to sleep well. So I made it into a little sash and, and I put some lavender in it and we would put it under her pillow or we rub a little bit of oil on her forehead. Um, it's, it's an amazing tea. You can drink it cold or hot. Um, I will make it like a lavender iced tea with it and add a little bit of lemon. Um, it's an anti-inflammatory. It helps heal burns and bug bites and it's you know great for insomnia, treating anxiety depression, restlessness. I grow a lot of cedar or a lot of um, lavender in my, in my gardens here. Um, we have an acre and I've got just about a garden in every, every little spot, nook and cranny. Sometimes I can't keep up with harvesting at all, so I have to bring in people to help me. The milkweed, our monarch, um, butterfly milkweed. Um, so, it's good for treating warts and ringworms and other skin ailments. I have never used it personally for these things. Um, I have used it for monarch butterflies. But they say that, you know, it's good for intestinal parasites, swamp, um, respiratory disorders, stuff like that. I have never, ever used milkweed, but I know of healers that have. I just use it for the monarch butterflies. Mullen, one of my favorite. Um, it's amazing for the respiratory. And you know, it's got the long cone that has the yellow flowers on it. And um, it's amazing anti-inflammatory, antibacterial. It's good for ear aches and ear infections and digestive health but it's also good for the lungs, for colds and respiratory um, problems. It's, it's good for that made into a tea. And it grows wild. You can find it just about anywhere um, along ditches and in your yard if you have a wet area. 
um, along the shores, uh, wherever there's lakes or streams. Stingy nettle tea. Now everybody said, oh, I would never ever harvest stingy nettle tea, but I love stingy nettle tea. Um, of course, you use gloves, very thick gloves, and make sure that you hang this to dry. Um, and then I crumple the leaves up. It's a diuretic. It helps with kidney and bladder infections. I have one elder that comes and picks up tea once a month to flush out her kidneys and her bladder. Um, it reduces um, water retention and high blood pressure. And uh, it's one of the hardest medicines to harvest, but it's one of the best medicines. So if you get a lot of um, urinary tract infections or kidney infections, this is one of the teas that you should be drinking. Pine gum, there we are. Um, I'm a big fan of this. Um, when we were kids, we used to chew on it. It was our gum. <laughs> And uh, I use it in a lot of my, my medicines, again, in my Minigan. Um, there's a place up in Six Nations. It's the Bear Inn um, Lodge or whatever it is where people come and stay. And all those trees, all those pine trees there have tons and tons of pine gum. So when I was up there, I asked the owner, uh, Lisa, I was up there for... I don't know if it was the powwow or the historical gathering, if I could harvest that pine gum and I got tons and tons of pine gum. So when I came back home, I gifted it to the elders in the community and other communities and only of course kept what I needed to make my men again. But it's, it's such a, um, I just love the taste of it. I just love, I love pine. I love the smell of pine. And I like the, the taste of that, that pine, that minty taste of the gum. So when we were kids, we used to pick it off the trees and chew on it. And of course, it's a cough medicine, a chewing gum, all of those things of freshen up your breath. And so if you're out walking and you need fresh breath, eat, take a piece of that pine gum and chew on it. Um, it's a remedy for ulcers, smallpox and syphilis. I've never ever heard of it being used for that, but I'm told by one of the healers that that's what they used it four years ago. Plantain, this is one of these uh, weeds, quote unquote, that a lot of people get rid of in their, in their, um, their yards. And it's one of the ones that I can't wait to come up when it, when it starts popping up in the spring and, and getting it harvested right down to the roots. And um, I make salve with it. I make plantain salve with it because it's an amazing puller. It's an amazing, if you have a sliver or an infection or something, it will draw out that sliver, that infection or whatever it is you want it to draw out. So it's an amazing puller. It's an anti-inflammatory. Um, it's one of your best medicines and it's, well, they call it a weed, but we call it a medicine. And remember always, always to give back. When you take these medicines, put a little bit of tobacco down. Tell that medicine why you're taking it, what you want it to do. Is it bringing out an infection? Is it drawing out something in your skin that you want it to help heal? It's such an amazing, amazing medicine. I can't say enough about plantain. And a lot of people are killing it in their yards and they shouldn't. They should be harvesting it and using it. Poison ivy, hmm, this one I really had a, I was like, really, poison ivy? Isn't it the cause of most of our skin irritation and stuff like that? But I'm told by, again, the medicine man that I go to, um, it was to treat pain and rheumatoid arthritis and menstrual period problems and swelling and itch, itchy skin disorder, which it causes, but it's used to make into a salve to help heal itchy skin disorder. So poison ivy, I personally wouldn't harvest it um, only because even getting near it, getting near those oils, I break out really bad. Um, but I know people that do put on gloves and away they go and they harvest that poison ivy. 
Bearberry, we don't have bearberry in this area. Um, it's grown where it's rocky and sandy. Alderville has it in their um, Savannah Oak um, area. So with permission, I always go over and I, I just harvest a little bit what I need. Now I have two plants that I've planted in um, an area on our yard that's pretty rocky and pretty sandy, hoping that it takes place. It hasn't died on me, but it hasn't got any bigger either. So I don't know if I have to move it or if it's just not gonna take, it's not gonna get um, bigger, it's not gonna produce berries. And if that's the case, then I'll take it over to the Black Savannah Oak over in Alderville and offer it to them to plant because I, I wouldn't want it to die. But if I'm not gonna get the berries and stuff, then I'll give it to some place where they will get the, the berries and stuff. I really like their berry. And they also use it in, um, their pipes as part of their kinikinik. So sema, sema bearberry, um, they'll use in their pipes. And it reduces urinary tract infections. Um, yeah, kinikinik. Um, it strengthens the kidneys. It's a powerful, um, it promotes healthy new cells. It's, it's a powerful properties in it. Blue aster, I do a lot of these pickings. Probably in another month, I'll start picking um, the aster. And uh, it's used to treat ear aches, relieve gas pains. And there goes the dog. I knew he was going to do that. Stomach aches and fevers. Um, the flowers and the and the roots are both used. They're both used in all those medicines and in teas. Come on. There's the Queen Anne lace. I wasn't sure whether it was on this slide or not. Um, wild carrot, it's known as wild carrot, and it's the morning after pill, as they call it. It's also good for the, the butterflies. It really attracts butterflies. Um, it's good to help prevent kidney stones, um, get rid of when things used to be bad, you know, back years ago um, for worms, to get rid of worms in people's digestive tracts. Um, so it's a direct, uh, I can't even say that anymore. <laughs> now it's just lost my, just lost my thought. But Queen Anne lace, and my uh, my mom uses it in her flower arrangements when she does flower arrangements, and it's very pretty. The red maple, um, and analgesic washes in flame for the eyes, infection and stuff in the eyes, and for cataracts, for hives, for muscle aches. Um, Tea brewed from the inner bark has its uses for treating coughs and diarrhea and colds and um, infection here in, in your respiratory. And that's the red maple. Red raspberry. Um, it's an antiantoxin. It's got vitamin C. It's also um, claimed to fame as fighting against cancer, heart and circulatory um, diseases. Um, age-related decline in the women, um, the women use it. It's a woman's medicine. Um, again, I would never ever prescribe um, any medicines to a pregnant woman. But when I was pregnant, my grandmother would give me a half a cup of red raspberry and make me walk for about half a mile, one way, half a mile back. And she promised that it, uh, it would help with labor. And it was later in my pregnancy when I was about eight months. And my labor was easy. It was easy with my first child. I didn't drink it with my second child. And my labor was really hard. So the red willow bark, again, be very, very careful because it is an aspirin. It is used to make aspirin. It is an aspirin. Make sure that nobody has aspirin allergies when using this. Um, think of aspirin, and you know that red willow does the same thing as uh, red rat, or as uh, aspirin. Just be very careful. It's uh, such a strong medicine, and a lot of people have allergies to it. So you have to be very, very careful that you're not allergic to aspirin. Rose petals. Not only do they smell great, but when you're put into a tea or made into a tea. Um, 
they're an antibacterial, anti-inflammatory, but red rose, our rose petals are good for sleep um, to help you relax. So at night, if you're having problems sleeping after dinner, and you can use this in another cheese. So if you have like orange pico or whatever, you can drop some, and if you, you can eat them too, rose petals, but you can drop them into your tea and sip and it will help you relax for the night. Um, I would take it right after dinner. Not only that, it helps settle your digestive tract. And of course, we've all heard of red rose water or rose petal water that helps with uh, skin properties. And there goes my phone. Sorry, guys, I forgot to turn it off. There we go. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I thought I had turned it off. Sage. Okay. So sage packs a healthy dose of vitamins loaded with antitoxins, may support oral health, um, menopause, reduce blood sugar, um, may support memory and brain health, lower bad LDL cholesterol, and protect against certain cancers. And of course, sage is one of our medicines. So it's for grief, uh, for grief. We use sage for grief. Uh, we smudge with it, that, that negativity to get rid of all those things. And it dries up breast milk. So they use sage um, back in the day to dry up that breast milk um, for mothers that either lost a child at birth or didn't have the child for some reason um, to dry up her breast milk. Scouring rush or horse tail. Now my husband has used this and it's used for gout. Um, it helps um, um, uh, we've used it for gout, but it improves conditions of skin and nails. Um, it helps to lose weight. I don't know if that's because it flushes you out. So I guess it eliminates those fluids. That's how it helps the gout as well. And it stre strengthens bones and tendons. Um, combined with other medicines such as nettle, milk, thistle, or dandelion, it purifies um, our bodies and those toxic agents. We've used it for gout for my husband who got gout in his foot and I wouldn't pick the horse tail. And it grows wherever there's water. We have it in the ditches here all over. Um, so we used it for gout. Scouring rush is another name for it. Spearmint, good for the digestive um, system. So I know people that drink spearmint tea right after dinner to help their digestive system. It's high in antitoxins, um, hormone imbalance, uh, may reduce facial hair in women, improve memory, fights bacterial infections, lowers the blood sugar, and helps reduce stress. Um, as I said, I know a lot of people that drink a spearmint tea right after dinner, and it helps with that digestive system, especially if you overeat like this weekend is Easter and a lot of people over overindulge at Christmas, um, Thanksgiving stuff, stuff like that. A lot of hosts will serve spearmint tea after dinner. And there's our sumac. Remember the red berries. Don't ever use the white berries. I don't know if you have those white berry sumacs in your area, but don't use it. Um, to treat colds, fever, scurvy, not that we have that a whole lot here. Um, grinding the berries into salve to, open on, to use on open wounds. Um, diarrhea, um, sore throats, infections, asthma, colds. I mean, all of those things, the roots are used to stop hemorrhaging. Um, and you can find um, sumac just about in airy, a, any aerial wooded area. There, it's out there. Sweetgrass, um, of course, we know the smell is one of the most amazing smells in the world. Um, and it's a relaxing scent. Um, it's used in oils. So it relaxes us. We know that scent because we use that sweetgrass in our medicines every day. We know that scent relaxes us. It gives that, that calmness. Um, I just pick it up and I smell it. I grow a lot of sweetgrass here at, at, um, on our property. 
It's good for coughs and soothing, soothing um, sore throats. It loosens a tight cough when made into a tea or inhaling it into a steam. You can use it that way. But again, we all know what the sweet grass does for us. It, it helps relax us. Just that smell just gives us that relaxing feeling. Thistle, another one that is very, very hard to harvest and you have to have gloves and make sure that you, you wear gloves. Um, it supports liver health and, and that's one of its strongest medicines is it supports the liver health. So we have a lot of liver problems, bladder infections, stuff, stuff like that. The thistle is one of the ones to use. It promotes skin health, liver problems, uh, weight loss, reduces um, insulin resistance. So if you're uh, Diabetic improves uh, um, allergic asthma symptoms, say that really fast, um, limits the spread of cancer, and of course it supports bone health. Think of the thistle, think of how strong that stem is on that thistle and how thick it gets. Again, it will tell you where it needs to go in the body. So you see that thistle and how big it gets and how straight it grows and how thick that stem is. Think of the spine and the thistle and how much alike they are. If you look at a medicine, it will tell you. It will tell you where it goes in the body. It will tell you exactly where it needs to go. And you need to tell that medicine as well. This is what I need you to do. This is why I'm harvesting you. This is why I need you now. Thank you for giving yourself to me, that medicine property to me. And always, always, I can't stress this enough, you must give back. You have to give back. And I'm going to stop sharing. And thank you very much for listening to my words. We have a responsibility. If we want other people to use this medicine that we are picking, we have that responsibility of looking after ourselves and looking after the medicine before we gift it. Yeah. And um, um, just a little bit more on Labrador tea. It, it is really good for diabetes. So um, diabetes will, um, when you drink the Labrador tea, if you're looking after yourself and looking after the food you eat and really you know, maintaining that health, Labrador tea will really bring down your sugar levels and um, it will help you even out. And it's a, uh, one of the things that people always ask in regards to the tea, how, how do I make it? How, do, how long do I do it? How long, you know, like all of those things. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we are always told is make it as strong as you like your tea. Make it as hot as you like your tea. Make it as cool as you like your tea. Like any other kind of um, uh, hot drink that you're drinking, make it how, how you want it. And then it becomes yours. Let that Labrador tea or whatever medicines that you're using, let them know, as Kim stated before, what their intention is, what your intention is for that medicine, what you would like it to do for you. And, and you'll be really surprised at how much... Um, how much more health and uh, wisdom comes from understanding your person and understanding the medicines and everything will just come together. Another little uh, tidbit about um, red willow is that we used to use it as um, toothbrushes because we didn't have toothbrushes way back when. So if you ever noticed like if there's pictures of, of um, our ancestors and they had really good looking teeth, like they had really good looking teeth because they would always chew on that and they would use it as their toothbrush. Mm -hmm. And um, it made our gums really healthy and all the insides because we would get that aspirin from that red willow. And if you're ever out and about and you need a toothbrush, go pick a red willow. And, um, <clears throat> you know, I've learned a lot from my teachers and Kim being one of them about our medicines in our area because she took us out on a walk for um, new credit here. And uh, it was amazing, like all the things that I, I learned and just understanding and how to be when you are harvesting. And I'm very thankful, I'm very grateful for all your knowledge and your information and for being my spirit sister. And uh, I, I give you, 
thanks from the bottom of my heart and from Heritage Mississauga that um, for coming today and, and giving us your time. And I, and I want to send love and light to you and your husband to um, get uh, better and for him to come home and enjoy you and everything else that you have to offer for us today. So chi miigwech, Kim. Miigwech. Thank you for joining us today for our second webinar in our 2022 Indigenous Conversations webinars. We would like to thank Kim Muskrat for sharing these traditional teachings and her knowledge of traditional plants and medicines to help communities heal and live a physically and spiritually healthy life. We would also like to thank Faith Rivers for her continued support in this webinar series and as a director at Heritage Mississauga. Heritage Mississauga would also like to thank the Ontario Trillium Foundation's Resilient Communities Fund for their financial support to help us bring Indigenous conversations to a wider community through this webinar series. Join us next week as we welcome Kim Wheatley, who will be sharing her presentation, Exploring Ancestral Harvesting Practices. Register now on Eventbrite. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow us to stay a part of the conversation.